The gear-driven separator has an advantage of having an oil gear pump, which is attached to the horizontal shaft to act as a supply pump for purifier. The pump body is kept separate, which enables the operator to do the troubleshooting, without opening the separator. It comprises of idle gear and a driving gear. The driving gear is mounted on the horizontal shaft. The body of the gear is provided with a casing ring, and the horizontal shaft end is provided with a sealing ring. These rings will not allow the fuel oil to leak outside the gear case or towards the purifier lube oil sump. Each gear sits on a bush for proper fitting and rotation. When the motor starts and slowly rotates the horizontal shaft, the drive gear, which is attached to the shaft, will rotate the idle gear. The oil will be sucked inside through suction port. The fluid is carried by the gears to the discharge side of the pump, where the meshing of the gears displaces the fluid. The gear pump shaft is attached to the main horizontal shaft, using a quick coupling, also known as safety joint. This coupling will break in the event of a stuck gear pump, thus avoiding overloading in the main shaft and the motor, preventing significant damage. The rotation of the motor is transmitted to the purifier using frictional clutches. During stopping, as the motor comes to the stop position, the frictional lining pad will move inwards because of the spring force. However, the shaft carrying the bowl will continue to rotate as the drum on which the belt is strapped is still rotating. The brake is used to stop the rotation of the bowl and shaft. The brake is only used for emergency stops and when a quick check or repair is done. It usually consists of a brake handle, which carries the brake spindle and friction element. The brake assembly is attached to the separator using a bracket. A spring is provided on the brake spindle and the spindle is attached to a friction element. When the lever is lifted, the spring which was kept compressed releases and the brake lining are pressed against the outer surface of the frictional drum. The pressed brake lining will resist the rotation of the drum, making the shaft and bowl assembly to stop. The friction coupling on the motor pulley ensures gentle startup and prevents overload of the electric motor. In the shaft-driven separator, the motor shaft is connected to the boss, who carries the frictional lining pads. The horizontal shaft driving the separator bowl is connected to the frictional clutch drum. In the belt-driven arrangement with the vertically mounted motor, the frictional drum is provided on the motor shaft, which carries the belt, to drive the vertical shaft of the separator. After starting, the motor instantly rotates at its rated speed. The centrifugal force makes the frictional lining pads go outwards and pressed against the internal surface of the frictional drum. The power is transmitted to the drum, which rotates the separator bowl as the drum and lining pads slip together. The bowl would typically attain its full speed in 2 to 5 minutes, depending upon the make of the centrifuge separator. As the oil continuously flows out of the heater towards the purifier, it is passed through a three-way direction control valve in which temperature and pressure of the oil is monitored. The temperature is continuously sensed by the thermo sensor fitted on top of the three-way valve. The output from the sensor is set to the main control unit which will operate the three-way control valve. The valve can be either pneumatically or electrically operated. If the temperature of the oil is lower than required, the controller will shut the purifier inlet side, and the valve will lift to divert the fuel back to the heater or to the fuel tank through the return line. The valve will also open the return line during starting, stopping, and desludge period. If the set temperature is reached, the controller will operate the valve downwards, which will open the purifier inlet port, and the heated oil will go to the separator inlet for purification. The thermo sensor on this valve sends the signal to the control unit, which also controls the air pressure of the pneumatic control steam valve to reach the desired oil temperature. 
If you have any questions or suggestion, please drop your comments below and we'll get back to you at the earliest. If you like this video, please subscribe to the Marine Insight channel and press the bell icon to get notified when we post such amazing videos. Please like, comment and share this video and do not forget to subscribe to our channel.